marriage is an awesome thing. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> it feels like a trick question. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, marriage is awesome. We spend our days, in fact, helping couples walk in the awesomeness of marriage <laughs> as God designed it unto his glory for our good. There's so many wonderful things to be realized within marriage. Our society does not agree. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Our society happens to think that marriage is more or less arbitrary. Uh, when you get married, uh, it doesn't really matter. In fact, our society's as statistics show us, they're pushing marriage out. Yeah. A study just came out. Um, the median age of people in their first marriage is the highest, well, almost the highest it's ever been. I think it peaked like maybe last year. <laughs> so it went down slightly. So the age is like the oldest... At what age are people when they first get married? For mm. men, 30.2 years old. Okay. For for ladies, it's 28.4. As compared old. to in the 60s, 60, 50s, and 60s, the, I think it, the men's age was 22 years old and the right. women's age was 20 years old. That's, that's a wild ocean of difference. Right. So yeah, 20 versus 28. So think of that in, in terms of percentages. Right. It's, you know, you are, what's eight years out of 20, that's 40%. Yeah. Later, you're waiting 40% longer. So I think we're all wondering the question, is it better to get married earlier or is it better to get married later? Is it better? So you might know where we're going to land on this <laughs> based on what we started with. Marriage is awesome. Why would you put off an awesome thing? Well, but what um, if you get married too young and you marry... A not so great person. There's a lot of questions around this. There are questions this. to be had. So yes. uh, we're going to have this conversation. When is the right age to get married? Now, you're listening to this. You might already be married. You might be headed into marriage. Still, we hope to make this relevant to you, whether you're married or headed into marriage or a marriage hopeful. <laughs> uh, you will find this encouraging, helpful, and relevant in your real life. So we'll see you on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fierce Marriage Podcast. I'm Ryan. This is my lovely wife, Selena. It is our joy to be here every Tuesday with the Fierce Marriage Podcast and many Thursdays with the Fierce Parenting Podcast. So if you're a parent, check that out, Fierce Parenting Podcast. It's where we share all of our expert advice. We know everything there is to know. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Uh, what we do with parenting is we try to just point you to Christ. <laughs> and you, we're and pointing you, our own hearts to yes, Christ. We're pointing ourselves to Christ. Yes. So anyway, thank you for joining us. We pray that this podcast blesses you. If you want to join the Fierce Fellowship, that's one of the main reasons the Lord has seen fit to provide for the Frederick mm -hmm. household. Go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. That's the Fierce Fellowship. That's our tight knit community of people that are just on mission. Mm. They think this is important and we happen to agree. Yeah. All right. So is it better to marry young? And I, I'm just going to come out with it is, yes, I think it's better to marry young. And we're going to lay, lay out a case for that here. If you're already married, why would you continue listening to this? <laughs> it seems like a moot point. <laughs> uh, because, you know, you probably have kids. You probably are going to have kids. You have, probably have people in your life that are considering marriage. And I think as a Christian culture... When I say Christian culture, I mean the people that are Christians who are listening to this, who we are the ones that are building out mm -hmm. a Christian culture yeah. in our immediate vicinities. I think it's far better for us to cultivate a Christian culture of young marriage. Yeah. With, of course, obvious caveats like don't be idiots. <laughs> be, <laughs> Best advice you know, Michael like ever gave me. <laughs> trusting, trusting Christ. Don't be an idiot. You know, those well, sorts of things. And I think even if you are married, uh, you know, we've been married since the ages of what, 20 and 21. Yes. And there's things that we've learned about, you know, that have uh, things that we've learned about our marriage that, oh, maybe this was a problem because we got married so young. And here's how we're growing in this. Like it's it, it doesn't matter if you're married or not. Like it's you it helps you see more clearly sure. where you're at. So if you're married, keep listening. If you're not married, keep listening. Like just yeah. we're grateful to be in your space today. So. Yeah. I'm actually going to use a tweet from a friend of mine. His name is Michael Foster. He's an author of a book called It's Good to Be a Man. I think he's got a few other books in the works. Lord willing, he will be a Lion Press author mm. at some point um, along with us. Um, so anyway, Michael gave me permission to share this, but I want to make sure you know that it came from him. So these he gave kind of four benefits of marrying young because mm -hmm. he, like us, him and his wife got married young as well. Mm -hmm. 
And he's got an articulate way with words. And so I said, hey, I'm just going to share these and then we're going to talk about them. And then we're going to add a few of our own and maybe talk and also talk about some uh, downsides to marrying young and how we can overcome those. Right. So the number one. So here's what he said. I'll start with how he started the tweet. He says, marriage is to, to be entered into with great care, especially these days. Yes and amen. But don't unnecessarily delay it. There are benefits to marrying young. Here are four that, um, at Miss, this is Mrs. Foster, that's his wife's handle on Twitter, that they've experienced. Okay. He, uh, she was 19 and he was 23 when mm-hmm. they got married. Um, you were 21. I was 20. Yes. Uh, you're six months older than me. Yes. And you're a cradle robber. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he never lets me forget it. It's, it's I true. get all of the benefits and he gets none of the blame. <laughs> he gets all the benefits and none of the blame. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. All right. So Michael said this, the first reason, uh, the first benefit of getting married young is that they dried together. In other words, they were still wet cement as individuals. Here's what he said. Our opinions and habits weren't, quote, set. So they were, they were formed in the context of us. Older marriages are like company mergers. Younger marriages are like startups. Each have their challenges. Mm. That's very well said. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. So does that resonate with with you in terms of our experience? (laughs) Yes. And we'll get to a little bit more of that part of the conversation. But I think, I mean, wouldn't you say it's, I think he put words to our our marriage and the experience that we've had together. Yeah. No, when he talks about being wet cement, I think, yeah, he's talking about kind of your uh, in terms of your emotional kind of, I'll say even life philosophy development in some ways, even yeah. your theological yeah, your maturity on like every level is yeah, it's all wet cement. Still, yeah. So when you're basically like mixing your cements together <laughs> and you're and you're hardening together into this whatever the form it's going to take. So that was absolutely our experience and the idea of a younger marriage being like a startup, right. It's very, uh, it's that's warm, honestly yeah. <laughs> one of the, um, that's one of the appeals to me as a young man of getting married young was I felt like we were embarking on this adventure together and yes. it was a completely blank slate right? as opposed to the alternative. Now, when you, as you watch this episode, as you listen to it, please don't hear us saying if you got married late then you somehow made a mistake or that you somehow don't read into it. Yeah. We're not trying to condemn you. We're not doing any of that, but we're just saying if you are in a place where you're having to make this decision or help someone else make the decision, take these into consideration. Well, and if you did get married late, you probably would agree that there's some like, yeah, it's more of a company merger than a startup and both of them have their own problems and their own, you know, struggles that they have to deal with. I just think, you know, you want to say they're different, but I do think growing together is, is a wonderful thing. And just, yeah, unnecessarily, he says, don't unnecessarily delay it. And so what is, what would you define as unnecessary? Right. It's like, well, I need to, culture would say, you need to have your career. You need to be self sufficient. You need to, you know, be successful in A, B, C, and D. And then, you know, you can think about maybe doing some of this stuff, like like having a relationship. Maybe it's worth articulating (laughs) some of those assumptions we're making. So say, imagine you're, uh, you know, somebody, or this was you back when you started dating and you have found the right person. Right. All they check all the right boxes. They, um, which from Christian perspective, th- this would be a different, I feel like this no, would be a little this bit is a Christian perspective. Yeah. So they love the Lord. Yeah. They, uh, you know, you share the same vision for reality in terms of who God is and what he's calling you to do right. as believers. You, uh, you want the same things. You want to, to build a life together. You want to build a family together mm-hmm. and young, well-meaning college students will, will have this, this happen. And it's like, Oh, I know I'm going to marry this girl. I just need to wait. I'm not going to, I'm not going to propose because we're going to graduate and then I got to find a job and I want to make sure. Right. So I think that's what Michael's getting at yeah, here is don't unnecessarily delay it. And here's some reasons why you might take that leap and say, even though we haven't finished school, even though we don't have that career yet, even though we're not yet established, if you're staring at, into the face of a woman or a guy who mm. is the right woman or guy, these, these, these are encouragements for you. Right. Okay. So those are, that's kind of the assumption we're making here. Uh, so the first one is you, you, they got to dry together. We mm-hmm. get to dry together, go from wet cement to not so wet cement <laughs> together. <laughs> Number two, uh, we got each other's best. So here's what Michael said. He said, our quote, prime years were spent on each other and not on strangers. Marrying young meant our past relationships were few. I love this. We have a history 
not histories. Mm-hmm. It's well put. We have a history, not histories. And he said, side note, and this is the caveat, God can and does redeem misspent years, but skipping that unwise spending is ideal. Mm. So please don't hear that again. Right. God will redeem as God sees fit to redeem, and he is faithful to right. redeem. But again, we're talking to a young couple, or if you're talking to a young couple, these sort to keep in mind. And that's very much, I think, our experience. I mean, you had many girlfriends in elementary school, it sounds like, in middle school. I had a grand total of I, three girlfriends. Well, that's yes. three more it than was, I had. They were all in middle school. I had boyfriends. No. <laughs> I had one boyfriend, one and a half, two. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? You're going out in like six. I don't even know what that means still. I'm just <laughs> Who knows? But anyways, there's not a lot of history because as you get older and your relationships mature, clearly there's going to be just this natural progression uh, towards intimacy, whether that's emotional, physical or spiritual. Like there's there's this this pull for that. Right. And so we don't I don't have we don't have anything that we need to kind of hash out or go through because we were kind of each other's it like you're it for me. I I don't have Mm. anybody else. I haven't experienced anyone else like you are it. And I love that. So that singularity of mind, I I remember as a young man being aware of it and and thinking, am I, are we unwisely committing too, too soon? And I don't know if I've ever articulated this to you. I don't think you you have. I'm like, no, I never. Well, because as a young man, you're like, well, I just remember thinking, well, I went back to the objective truth that like, I know I I love this woman. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, because there are a lot of young people, it's just a real thing these days. They have this f- real fear of missing out. Yeah. Meaning that they never quite in- and commit to the relationship because they're always kind of thinking, well, what if there's someone just a little bit better? Right. And ironically, they're missing out <laughs> in the relationship right. that they could be not missing out on in because they are right. focused somewhere else. And so here's now we're, we have daughters. And so the reason why that angers me is because I think it's usually driven by young men because they're, tr- they're trying to. F- to get to the ideal, sure. whatever the ideal girl is, women will do this too. Cause they'll say, I'm waiting for the six, two guy who's right. making six figures a year yeah. who, and like, by the way, the statistics on those guys being available, like that's above average height. That's above average income. Right. Like there's a, and if they're single, that's like, there's like 0.08% <laughs> likelihood that that guy exists, exists. truly. Cause right. most guys aren't that. So you, on both sides, you, you, you are waiting for the ideal. Like these are from worldly standpoints, worldly, worldly st- standards, yeah. standards. So the reason why this angers me is because you get a young guy who maybe is dating a quality girl, which by the way, dating is not a thing for us. <laughs> We're not teaching our it's daughters courtship about or nothing. Courtship <laughs> is, is the word. Um, and so these young ladies are, are holding out waiting. So they're giving their prime years yeah. to their, to this young guy. Tragically, a lot of times these young ladies are not virgins. They're not, then they're sexually active with these young men as yeah. well. And so they're giving their sexual prime years away. And along with that birth control, uh, mm. God forbid abortions, things like that, because they're not in a committed relationship yet, but they, they are committed, but he's not. Mm. And so they spend, we'll say their mid twenties into their early thirties with yeah. men like this. And he, he just on a whim says there's no commitment. He, he finds maybe a better thing. He yeah. moves on. Right. Well, she's spent. Yeah. Now, not now the Lord redeems, but like she's spent all the, that time investing in her mind. This is the man she's building a life mm. with in his mind. He's happy, but he's not. Anyway. Right. And the problem is that <clears throat> we're placing value where God, I think didn't intend value to actually be placed all the time. And I mean, like, I just think back to our years, like the 20 through 25 range, we put value in certain things that we thought God was like valuing. And I don't think, you know, I wouldn't say he doesn't value career, but he values your heart. And what is your heart orientation towards all of those things? So I come come back to us in our pre-engagement dating relationship. We dated for four years, two in high school, Mm -hmm. two in college. And I remember reading that passage where Paul says, (laughs) it's better to marry than to burn with passion. Mm -hmm. And I thought, amen, brother. (laughs) Amen, brother. I'm going to put a ring on it. (laughs) But did I have that sense of um, I'm, I might be missing out on someone else if I put a ring on this girl? And to be honest, I saw that and I said, I'm willing to take that chance. Oh, that's funny. I didn't see it. I think I was just 
head over heels for you. I'm just like, well, yes. And, and that's, and that's what I'm trying to say yeah. is that it was a no brainer. I'm like, yeah, right. that's, I could, that, that could be the case, but I want Selena. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm not missing out because that's, <laughs> right. she's the one for me. She's right. the one I want. And I knew that you were an amazing woman mm -hmm. and we're going mm -hmm. to continue being an amazing mm -hmm. woman. In true. fact, you're more amazing than I thought you could ever be. <laughs> Cause I was just an idiot, <laughs> <laughs> but don't we all. Um, so that's, that's the second one. So we, they drive together. We, uh, we got to, we got to experience each other's best. We have a history, not histories mm -hmm. of previous partners or yep. previous boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever. Number three is they got on with life faster. Here's what Michael said. He said, the added responsibility of marriage and family forced us to step up and mature faster than many of our peers. We missed out on some get togethers and traveling. But in exchange, we grew in wisdom and maturity at a faster pace. Mm. I see this among young fathers. So when I see a, a young guy get married, he has his first child. There's like a switch that flips in that guy's it has mind. To. Yeah. And you realize no one else is coming to the rescue. Like I am the one that needs right. to step up to this task. Now, some guys get crushed under that and they run. Yeah. I think for which is not right. Right. I think for women and wives as well, becoming a mother, it's a huge, a huge yeah. transition. And so, yeah, it, you're either crushed by it or you, you rise to it. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, I don't hear this language as much as I would love to hear it being just shouted from the rooftops of, you know, we missed out on some get togethers and travel, but in exchange, we grew in wisdom and maturity at a faster mm -hmm. pace. Like the world, the culture is just screaming, like, get yours, go travel, do your thing. It's all about you. Very, of course, yeah, humanistic in its message, but this is not the same. I I wish I would have heard more of this in my... Same. Yeah. This is what you're growing and this is what, when you decide to do something, when, when that f switch flips and you are in charge, the buck stops with you, you're not really thinking about <laughs> the peripherals anymore. You're now thinking about someone else and, mm. and the, the demands and the needs of someone else, which, wow, what a, what a picture of love and grace, right? It, yeah. it, it doesn't seem beautiful and problem free. It seems hard. And yeah. So I, I wouldn't say that you're not missing out on adventure so much as you're trading one type of adventure for another. You're sure. trading one type of experience for another. Sure. Uh, Cause you could equally say everyone who forewent or for or who foregoes marriage, given the opportunity sure. at a younger yeah, age, yeah, yeah. everyone who foregoes that is missing out on, you know, get togethers. They're missing out on whatever. Right. The, right. So you could say it's the true. same on the opposite it's side. True. It's just a different set of it's, it, it has come, it comes down to values. Yes. And so if you do value these things that he's talking about, wisdom, maturity, yeah. if you value those things, this is why we're advocating for, Green. uh, Younger marriage when it's a possibility. Uh, and the fourth one that Michael said is we saw each other's potential realized. And here's what he wrote. You were just kids when we met. I had the goal for my, I had a goal for my life, uh, but didn't have a defined path to get there. Mm. We got to watch each other come into our own. We saw potential in each other. Now we see much of it realized. Mm. Yeah, I can echo that. Now I, I will say I had pretty big lofty, uh, what's the word? Vague. <laughs> Ideas of what our life would be like. Yeah. And truly no, I no, no idea. Not, not, not only just a no plan, but no earthly idea how <laughs> anything was going to happen in real life. Right. A lot of dreams, to be honest. And, uh, but it's been so cool to watch as we go and see how the Lord is using kind of, in some sense, blind ambition, oh, yeah. but blind faith absolutely, to mold. And here we are, yeah. marriage ministry. I would have never envisioned this when we got married that, <laughs> Hey, let's do a podcast in, in 20 years. Let's be doing a podcast. Let's yeah. be writing books. No, I would, I yeah. had some other, I don't know, other ideas. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been fun to watch each other come into that. Agreed. So yeah. What might the Fredericks add to this list? I, I had this idea cause this was, here's what I, I wrote down. If you marry young, you get to experience life slash adventure together in real time. Now, of course, there's some overlap to what we've already said. So I used to work painting apartments. Have I told you this before? You don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know. So I used to work painting apartments uh -huh. for a commercial painting company. And it, I remember going to these big apartment complexes and I'm, I don't know, I was probably 18, 19 years old. We were dating, clearly. Yeah. And I'm masking off stuff. I'm painting. I'm going in. I'm seeing these young couples living their life like independent, 
you know, they had their, I don't know. It was just something about having an apartment. I was like, I couldn't wait to start that adventure with you. Right. Same. Yeah. And uh, that was to me like getting married young. I was like, I love that we had nothing. <laughs> yeah. Now I didn't love that we had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, right. I, he had to work hard. I had terrible jobs and worked too many hours. Yeah, but that's how you grow, right? <laughs> that's how we grow. But to me, it was the idea of we're going on this adventure together. Right. And all those moments were experienced in the context of us. Mm -hmm. Just like he said, yeah. Not me, you know, not me graduating college and you graduating college. And how did your graduation go? And I can yeah. have that memory alone. You can have your memory alone. And said we're having those the, those experiences together. The second one is not burning with passion. And you mentioned this, you know, we were both virgins when we got married, but there was some passion to be. Well, there was some burning and some passion to be no, <laughs> like th this was a serious this, motivation. Uh, like, yes. It's not getting any easier. It's, I, we either break up or we get married. That's kind of where it was because yeah. we just were playing with some fire and it was not good. Yeah. I <laughs> we're mean, getting and, too close to get burned. <laughs> And so this brings into view a whole different line right. of questions, which is, okay, why is our, culturally speaking, people are getting married in the tw late 20s and 30s. Right. What is a Christian to do? <laughs> right. If that's the mindset that we're buying into. Yeah. I mean. That <laughs> never before in the history of humankind have people waited. Right. That long to get married. Yeah. So they uh, just burned with passion for eight more years. I like, think it was far more common that, yeah. So, right. Like, no, they didn't clearly. Like, it's far more common for if you, if you want to live a life that is, you know, before the face of God, you're honoring the Lord, you are following yeah. what He's commanded us to do. I don't, I mean, dating and waiting until you're in your 30s is just a recipe for sin. It's a recipe for having a sexual history before you enter into your right. marriage. Uh, and so this was a huge motivation for, for me as a young man, for you as a young lady. And it, it factored in. So yeah, huge, motivation. huge benefit, huge motivation, <laughs> especially for her. Um, another one, uh, logistics. Think what do about, you mean by logistics? I mean, you graduate, if you go to college, you graduate college, you have to figure out life. Yeah. Okay? So you've got to get a job. You've got to figure out where you're going to live. If you get a job out of your hometown, you're not going to live at home. So what are you going to do? Get a roommate? Are you going to rent a studio apartment by yourself? Logistics of yeah, living I mean, on your own, it's yeah. expensive. Especially, yeah. And so if you're living with your young bride and, you know, you're building a life together. Right. Theoretically, you can have, as you begin, two incomes. Now, obviously, if you become a mother sooner, then that's going to factor in. You're not going to want to work. You're going to want to be home. with. Um, so... Just logistically speaking, it's a consideration. And the fourth one that we would add to this is benefits to extended family. Now, yeah. this is given if you get married youngish mm -hmm. and you have children youngish, right. you're going to give your, your parents grandchildren, which that's awesome. And it's such a blessing. I mean, children awesome. are a blessing yeah. to their family, their yeah. parents as well. But to be able to spend as much time with their grandparents, yeah. possibly even their great grandparents to hear the stories, to be familiar with you know, family backgrounds. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. And so the, I feel like the longer we wait, you know, parents are, are dying off and there's not that time that you get to, you, mm. your kids get to have with them. Um, you don't get to experience them being grandparents and, uh, the blessings that come along with that. And so it's, I used, I used to be the person that was like, man, they got married so young and they're already having kids. Ah, that totally came out of my mouth. Looking back, I'm like, man, why did we wait so long? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. why did we, why were we so intentional about that? And I think it was unnecessary. I mean, looking back, I think we both were like, that nah, was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely um, have learned and embraced some different lines of thinking that we didn't have early on in our marriage. Yes. And God is gracious and um, sovereign in it all. Okay. So the, the elephants in the room here. So let's talk about downsides of marrying young. Okay. I don't know if you call them downsides. I'd say just identifying the struggles with marrying okay. young, right? Because yeah. downside sounds like there's a downside and I don't think there's a, a there's downside. There's potential pitfalls yes. that maybe need to be avoided. So one of them was, and you brought this up, Selena, is that, yeah, we get married as wet cement, but what do, do we actually allow each other to cure mm -hmm. or to dry and yeah. to... So, something. So in other words, are we actually growing out of right being 20 and 21? Sure. Right. Uh, is, or is there a sense of arrested development that we stop kind of developing because we never really become adults because we're always perpetually immature with one another. Right. 
Now, what that can look like is you maybe have unhealthy communication tendencies, you know, yeah. you never grow out of because you just build habits that, right. that don't facilitate growth. Or you have maybe immature humor or you have <laughs> immature ways of thinking about the world, immature yeah. ways of thinking about money. And perhaps immature ways of thinking about sex. Right. Which is one of the reasons why we have the Fierce Marriage Podcast. These are all things that I think we wish someone would have said to us or shown us on some levels. I mean, we did have a sense of these things, but looking back now, we're like, man, I wish I would have had a book about this. Or I wish I would have had right. an influencer or a voice speaking to me, right. kind of laying out those guideposts of here's what you do when you're doing this. Here's what you want to do with this. Like here's the path we took. Here's what we advise. Here's what we don't advise, you know? And so there's, yeah, there's just that we've been together for so long. Did I allow you to grow up? Did you allow right. me to grow up? Or are we just like, why is he acting so blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's not like him. Well, maybe he's trying to grow. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe she's trying to grow. Or maybe you just stop pushing as a couple. You stop yeah, you pushing just, to, to move your life to the next phase. Oh, well, pushing. I mean, just doing the uncomfortable, I think is like, sure. Right. Yeah. You, or you never stop. You never, you never, you stop looking ahead. You're just kind of right. content with where you're at and yeah. not that contentment's wrong. Right. It's a resignation of, but there is a real sense that I think we should have a godly ambition to, yeah. to move the ball, so to speak in society, in our lives, in, in our generation. Right. We should be growing. Absolutely. Um, and so sometimes that can be the case. So how do you, what's your way around it? Well, just open your eyes, look around, start having questions. I say read the Bible. Read, yes, of course. <laughs> Go to church. like. But talk about these things and, and pray that the Lord will waken yes. you from yes. your slumber, so yes. to speak. Yes. Um, another potential pitfall here is, or I guess maybe a question is, what if you make a mistake? You get married young. We've all heard this horror story. So someone who got married young, the shotgun wedding, they eloped in Vegas. <laughs> And the, in hindsight, they think, man, that was, that was a mistake. It was just kind of like an impulsive thing. Right. Um, Which speaks to the weight of marriage. It speaks to the choice, right. the power of choice that you have, uh, especially as a woman. Right. And so mm -hmm. if you are not approaching it with some understanding of the weightiness of it, yeah. then I would say, wait, <laughs> you know, cause yeah. if it's not like it's eating yeah. a chocolate candy bar or something, right. It's like, yep. there's a lot to be had. Not that you know everything going into it, but that's where you, as young women, I hope that our daughters will come to us and they will, they'll trust us and we'll be able to talk through some of these uh, concerns that we might have and that they'll be able to use, apply wisdom uh, in their yeah. life as well. So I think this one is a, it's always a function of the people and what you said, the understanding of the weightiness of covenant yeah. more than it is a function of marriage itself. Yes. And so when we say get married young, the big caveat is get married wisely young. Yeah. I mean, and find a godly spouse, understand what marriage is, understand right. what covenant is. We talked about the kind of horror story, got married young, didn't realize who he was, who she right. was. Horrible mistake, ruined my life. Yeah, that's horrible. Right. Uh, you weren't being wise. Right. Well, but there's it, also, <laughs> there's also the folk, you know, you think about, I've heard couples where they're like, yeah, you know, we got, in, I met my husband a month before he deployed. So we got married. Then he was gone for a year. Right. Now we've been married 75 years. Right. right? And we've had this wonderful marriage, right? right? Marriages that struggle at a young age, it's a function of the people, not marriage itself. Right. And I do think it's and the so, anomaly to, if you're a wise Bible believing Christian, it's the anomaly to have married the wrong person impulsively. I think that should be, yes, that is not the norm. And so we've all, we've also done a podcast on the myth of the soulmate, you know, that, that kind of plays into, you know, sifting through, am I marrying the right person or not? Mm, well, yeah. like God has a lot to say about who you marry. And if you don't know what he has to say, go read your Bible because it's very clear, uh, the foolish person, the wise person, mm -hmm. um, how, you know, who, who has the heart of your future husband or who, what is, where is his attention drawn? Where is your, where are your mm. priorities and values? And so I think that all those things can happen at a young age and they can, they can click and say, yep, that is the person. And like, we were talking about this earlier. I asked you what you saw in me or what you, did you see our future together? Did you see, you know, that, did you want me to be the mother of your children? Those kinds of things. And you said, no, no, it, not really. Like, <laughs> no, I didn't say not no. like I said, I hadn't envisioned it. You hadn't envisioned it, I but I do want that. Though. I know you wanted that. And <laughs> no, I should say that you wanted it, but you didn't envision it. Whereas yeah. me, I envisioned those things with him. I was like, I want him to be the father of my children. I know that I, he will take care of us <laughs> because he works hard and he's very smart. Um, and I know that he loves me and I know that he loves the Lord first and foremost, like that, once that box was clicked, I was just like, yeah, the rest is 
going to follow without I had, question. So just, to, I think it's just a personality that, thing. Well, and like, I had no earthly appreciation for children. As as a we, as a teenage we didn't, boy, we never I discussed how many children. We just well, were like, yeah, we'll have kids. <laughs> like I never, you watched young kids. You did. Like I was the a nanny camp thing, counselor, nanny. Camp counselor yes, thing. did all the things. I was the youngest in my family. I was never around babies. I was never around young kids. Yeah. I got that kids in theory were good, <laughs> but like, so I didn't have like this framework within which to place our family, right? And say yes, I want that woman and to we've be grown in the that. mother of my children. Yeah, we've grown into. Yeah. Understanding the framework and the value of yeah. that. And hello, fierce parenting and like family worship and all those types of things. Right. Like there's, yep. Yep. so anyways, the final, put, I guess, pitfall would be the potential for familiarity in a bad way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, when you get married young, you're immature Yeah, and it, it, immaturity takes time to grow out of. Yes. And so if you are not patient with each other as you're growing out of your immaturities mm. and you are not uh, and you're not mature enough yourself to see the big picture. Mm-hmm. Um, big changes happen over tiny increments. That's good. And so if you forget that those tiny increments are happening, mm-hmm. you'll be embittered toward one another. You could grow contemptuous toward one another. Mm-hmm. You could be uh, very impatient with, cause your spouse is not growing up. Well, he's only 24 years old. <laughs> like you've been married two years. He's 24. He's still maturing. Right. And it's not an excuse for enabling, you know, childish right. behavior, but, but he's not the same man. He's going to be when he's 34. Hopefully. Right. And by Hopefully, prayer, yeah. ideally, yes. Or when he's 40. This feels like a parenting podcast right there. Cause these yes. are things we've been talking about right now. I'm like, we're like, do we have too high of expectations of our five-year-old, like cleaning the entire house, top to bottom. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> of course not. But there's been some conversations like this. We're or, not letting them develop and, yes. and have that maturity. Yes. Or you know, something he, he's stunting not, it. You know, if he's not able to provide the life that you want him to provide, well, he hasn't reached his income potential yet. Right? If he's a hard worker and he's wise, he, that will increase. Well, and as a wife, I would say find some contentment and joy and gratefulness yes. in the season yes. that you're you should, in. Your happiness should not be contingent on what you have. It should be on, on the Lord and, and contentment and trusting him. Uh, other areas where this could be causing problems is even in your sex, sexual maturity together. Yes. You think that when you're young, that your sex life is going to be, it's supposed to be this like passionate, That's so funny, spontaneous, I had, always amazing. I had no idea. Like I had for, for you had visions for that. I <laughs> yes. was like, I don't know. I was just going to come with the territory. Like that's so funny. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the things that we both had env- envisions for. It. But young couples, they fall into this <laughs> yes. where they think their sex life should mirror the most passionate visions of sex that, that they've, they've conjured in their imaginations yeah. for one another. Right. And you realize, wow, it's actually pretty routine sometimes, pretty yeah. mundane, maybe not as spontaneous, maybe not as adventurous, maybe not whatever. Yeah. And so the encouragement to a young couple is you just wait. <laughs> like <laughs> it truly is one of the best improving aspects of marriage is, yeah. is your sex life because yeah. you grow into it together. Yeah. And this is why pornography is so insidious because it's always importing filth into yeah. your mind and into your marriage from filthy places. Yeah. Now, if you, if you cut all that off, right. Which every couple you should, should pornography should yeah. not be part of your life as an individual or as a couple cut it out and say, we are going to just grow into our sex life together. Mm-hmm. And wherever that takes us, I'm along for the ride, baby. Mm. <laughs> and just begin to enjoy one another and wait five well, years. Just buckle up, years. honey. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's great. It'll, it'll only get better. So long as you stay the course, you cut off the toxicity from yes, outside yes. and just enjoy one another and focus on loving each other Yeah, and talking about it and talking through it. It'll get better. Yeah. We've done many episodes on sex yes. and intimacy. So go well, check just, those out. It's what the people want. It's what the people yeah. want. <laughs> okay. So we've covered some reasons why getting married young is a blessing. Awesome. It's and a it's blessing a, yeah. and some things to look out for uh, as you maybe head down that road. We pray this episode helped you, but we don't like to end these episodes without a call to the gospel. If you don't know who Jesus is, we want you to know Jesus. We want you to respond to the good news that he has offered salvation to anyone Mm -hmm. who places their faith in him. That can be you friend. And so if you want to place your faith in Christ, uh, we want to help you do that. Our first encouragement for you is to find a friend who is a Christian and say, help me become a follower of Christ. What does Mm -hmm. this mean? 
Yeah, it's good. Uh, ideally, along with that, you can start going to a church. That's number two that preaches out of the word. If you don't have a friend or a church nearby that you know of, we have a website for you that could help. It's the news is good.com. And that will point you to a church finder, but also show you a little bit more about what it means to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Mm. Lord God, we love you. Thank you for the gift of marriage. I pray that this uh, episode would help people. I pray that uh, young couples who are on the verge of marriage or considering marriage, I pray that you would give them a heart of wisdom, help teach them to count their days, that they might have a heart of wisdom. Lord, help them to trust you, help them to walk wisely with prudence and with diligence. And I pray that you would bless them. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining us for the Fierce Marriage Podcast. If you want to become part of of the Fierce Fellowship, go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. We would be honored. Other than that, this episode of Fierce Marriage is... We'll see you again in about seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce.